Everything's loose. Everything's missing screws. Everything's everything's terrible. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Hope you had a great New Year. Hope you had a great holiday. And I hope you're ready to take a look at uh, what I've got here in front of you. This is something I've recently picked up off of Facebook Marketplace. It's a IBM 5150 uh, clone. There's no um, part numbers on it. There's no name brands on it. There's no nothing. Um, basically, the only thing I think it says on here somewhere is Taiwan. So it's a clone. But um, other than that, I really don't know anything about it other than it's like really dirty and um, things are very loose on it. So I've not cracked it open yet. Let's go ahead and do some exploration on it, check things out, see what we actually have here, and then see if we can't, um, well, we'll see if it runs, and if it does, we'll see um, what we can do with it. So first and foremost, I'm seeing things don't really line up. Uh, this is probably, I don't know, lit a led a pretty hard life. The only thing I really know about it is the uh, previous owner said that it has some sort of like custom OS on it, uh, but the last time he started it, you know, it worked. So we'll see what it is. Uh, so let's see here. Yeah, things are very kind of loose on it. Very dirty, very grand. You can actually feel that. So I don't know if that's rust or, or just dirty crud. Anyways. Um, we'll probably clean that up. Let's flip it around to the back and take a look at it. So here we are on the back side, and like I said, it says made in Taiwan. We've got some sort of like, I don't know, maybe serial number or something on here. Um, I, googled the, I googled this number and it didn't come up as anything. Um, and then we have another sticker, again, made in Taiwan. Um, it all seems pretty standard for a 5150. Um, <laughs> We got a various uh, ports on the back, um, keyboard, uh, printer ports. Let me go ahead and go on record right now and say this computer is older than where most of my knowledge comes from. This is way before um, anything I've ever really played with or messed around with. Uh, first computer I ever had was a Pentium 150. So this is just kind of... A beast that I've never like dove into before so I'm gonna say things wrong I'm gonna say things that don't make sense possibly hang in there uh, like I said if I say something wrong please don't jump into the comments yelling at me um, I will do my best here because I'm kind of flying blind um, so over here I notice they've got a labeled printer so I mean some sort of printer port uh, up here is a DB9 I believe I'm gonna guess this is our video. I don't have any kind of prior knowledge or expertise in this, so I could be wrong on this. Um, it is weird to me though to have a, um, what I'm guessing is a video out and a printer port, but um, maybe that's pretty standard par for the times. And then over here, I don't know if that's like a game port or, I do know that all the little nuts are missing. That's kind of weird. Anyways. Um, let's, uh, let's open it up. Let's take a look. So step one is going to be to, um, well, get the case off. And it looks like we have, oh no, these screws probably hold the power supply in. And so we got, we actually have black screws holding it in. So it looks like somebody's uh, already done some, some replacing for screws in here. And how much I love having mismatched screws on here. So I'll probably spend some time um, going through it and matching up screws. All right, we got the four screws out. We got, um, so is this slide off of the cup? That feels like there's another screw. There is another screw right there in the middle. There we are. Oh, you're definitely loose now. Does it just slide forward? It does. Oh, that's better. I beg your pardon, I forgot to turn the lights on. Don't. Yep. 
need more. I need more desk space. There we go. So hopefully we just got some screws. Oh wow. Okay. Let me. Uh... So as far as the front bezel goes, yeah, there's quite a bit wrong with the front of this case. A lot of the plastics are broken. Um, I'll see if I can deal with that. Um, still got a little brass. Can you see that? Oh, there we go. It's got a little brass insert in there, so maybe I can. Um, first of all, can you focus? There you go. A little brass insert is uh, still there, so maybe I can 3D print something and glue it on there and put that brass insert back in there. Um, that one we could probably just glue back together. So I think we do some surgery on this and get it um, a little bit more presentable. That'll be nice. Now for a look inside of it. Um, let me see here. The, um, most of my experience with these types of computers come from watching people like LGR and Adrian's Digital Basement and stuff like that. Um, so I don't know a lot about this. <laughs> so hang in there with me. Um, let's see here. Got some sort of BIOS chip in there that has a, uh, a written label on it. What does that say? Excel Turbo version 2.14 BIOS. We'll have to look that up. Um, let's see what kind of uh, expansion card. Oh, every one of these screws are different. <laughs> Somebody's been into this thing a lot of times. Okay. Um, let's see here. Let me let me mount you up, and we'll we'll take these cards out and see what they are. So first and foremost, we'll start over here. We got a ribbon cable leading over to what looks like the printer port on the back. Again, if it's not the printer port, I do apologize. Take that screw out of there. Um, come out of there. So let's see here. This ribbon cable goes on there with its index part here uh, facing down. So everybody remember that. What do we got here? Um, I'm going to guess some sort of printer uh, controller card maybe. There's no part numbers or nothing on it. But look at this. Oh wow. Somebody's been very rude to this thing. So there's the threads. But no, um, no, uh, I don't know what you'd even call that, socket on the top. Anyways, so I broke the part, top part of that off, so we'll probably fix that just to have it fixed. Um, yeah, made in Taiwan. I don't see any part numbers. I'm going to guess this is some sort of, like, generic printer card? I don't know. I don't know. If you know... Let me know in the comments. What's the next card? This is the card that I said had a printer port and a DB9, so I'm guessing it's video. Graphics card, some sort. Um, definitely not a VGA card. Oh, that came out much easier. Alright, let's see here. Well, that looks like a part number right there. MG150. LS139, LS08. I don't know. MG150 looks like it's more of a part number. Well, ET1000 Revision 1.0. 1, oh, 1D. Maybe that's a part number. I'll look that up. Uh, cool. All right. Well, that's the other one. Uh, what's next? Well, I mean, these are going to be simple. We have ribbon cables connected to them, so these are going to be um, hard drive and floppy controllers. Continue with the PC archaeology here, and we'll remove the next card in line. Which has our floppy drive connected to it. So this is just going to be the floppy controller card.
Good God. Oh, God. Okay. Got it out. Um, P11101. Or actually, that's probably PII101 FDD. Yeah, floppy disk drive 2 card. Um, compiles with the limits for class B computer, blah, 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 blah. All right, I mean, nothing terribly exciting. Um, I'll probably look this up here to find uh, you know some information out about it, but um, it seems to be in good shape. And the whole computer seems to be in good shape, which is kind of nice. Um, I'm not seeing a whole lot of dust or really anything in here, no corrosion. At least it doesn't seem like there is. Next card. We've got the hard drive plugged into. We have two cables into the hard drive. This one is plugged in with the indexer down. Remember that for me, please. As well as this one, the indexer down and the red wire which is kind of beat up uh, pointing towards the front of the machine so again remember that wow is that that one doesn't even want to budge. Kind of the way it is, it's very interference type of slot. So let's see here. What do we got here? The WD-1002-27X revision, revision white box. This seems like a newer card. With all the surface mount. So stuff on it versus something like this. Um, I'll have to look this one up too. But, I mean, hard drive controller card, floppy drive controller card, those we know because they're hooked up to the floppy drive and um, the hard drive. So now, um, this is in the way of the motherboard. I'm sure we can get that out of the way here in a second. Let's take a look at the motherboard. So we got our RAM banks um, fully populated. Um, it looks like somebody has upgraded this machine at one point because we have, uh, I don't know this manufacturer, it just says USA um, and then has, you know, part numbers to it. And then over here we have, again, I don't know the manufacturer, UT or MT, um, different RAM chips. So it looks like this thing is going to be decked out with whatever the max is. Um, 640K motherboard, dual speed. So I don't know, is it 640 or maybe, um, we'll turn it on and find out. Oh, here we go. We have some jumpers there and it looks like it's set to 512K Bank 2. I don't know for sure. Looks like we got a CPU in there. I mean, of course, we have a CPU, but uh, we have, uh, let me see here, NEC903YV V20. V20. 1984. So that gives you an idea of when this machine was made, whereabouts. Good times. Um, I'm not seeing a 
battery anywhere. Which I don't know if the 5150s um, typically had a battery or not. Um, this particular one doesn't seem to have one. So we don't get corrosion from that. Good. Good times. Okay, so I'm poking around in here trying to see how, you know, you would get access under here to move the motherboard out. And the motherboard is very, very loose in here. That can't be right, right? So really somebody has been poking around in here and really not being very kind to this old gal. So I'm going to tear it all the way apart and we'll give it a real good clean and make it look presentable and hopefully it'll still work because usually I try to power these things up before I poke around in them but um, I kind of wanted to see what was going on here before I did that. Uh, it kind of goes against what I kind of always say but you know whatever. Let's uh, let's sally forth. Take a picture of the orientation of these two plugs just to make sure that I don't mix them up because you absolutely can and then you'll fry the board. We don't want to do that. So it looks like we got plastic uh, motherboard standoffs uh, all over the place. And really there's nothing over here. It looks like one could go here, but I'm not sure. I kind of would like to just use screws because I'm not a fan of these. So hopefully I can replace them with screws. Uh, you know, standard motherboard standoffs. So let's take a look. Also, the speaker doesn't look like it's original. And if it is... It is missing the install bracket for it because it's just zip tied on, which is kind of gross. Maybe I can print something for that. This is going to turn into a straight up like restoration. Come on. Oh, is that... Am I doing this the hard way? I might be doing this the hard way. Definitely doing it the hard way. One of these is not. There we go. There we go. Oh, that is all kinds of scratched up there. That looks like it used to have a screw of some sort. So we got our prize out. Um, it looks like it has, you know, all these standoffs here. And this one here is all kinds of like boogered up. There's a standoff that didn't come out, but I did disconnect it from the board. And then down in there, there would have been one. So really there should be nine. So let's go ahead and free this speaker from this um, terrible install. Seems okay. Probably works. Probably. Let's get the power supply out next. Should just be these four screws, I think. Unhook that and the hard drive. Now we might have to get in there first. So pin one, or uh, yeah, pin one on this cable. It's on the left of it. Future reference. Oh wow, there's one screw holding that in. Yep, one screw. Alright, let's see. Do you pull out the front or do you can you come through here? 
Or are you being held up by the hard drive? You might be being held up by the hard drive. Please come home. There we go. What kind of CD, CD, I keep saying that. What kind of floppy drive do we have? Now, I don't know if this is the brand name, but it says Copal all over it. Uh, Tacone 780, or Tacone 1787. See, I wish I knew more about this stuff. Um, it seems like it's in good shape. I unfortunately don't have any media I could stick in there to find out if it works. Um, but I can get some through the magic of eBay. Anyways, uh, it looks like it's in good shape. Let me set that aside. What kind of hard drive we got in here? We have something I gotta take out first. Oh, let me get that plug out of there. I have to use a manual screwdriver. Oh, well, cool. None of the things in here are like, you know, nothing is secure. Like, look, everything is, everything's loose, everything's missing screws, everything's, everything's terrible. Okay, we have a NEC, where are you, right there. NEC, what is it, an LR83400? Do not open the cover. Good idea. Let's see here. It does say that it has some bad cylinders. 642. Heads 8. Uh, part number 134-500558-531. And it's a D3142 disk drive. And it's barely held in here. Holy cow. Alright. Well, we're definitely going to make this thing more solid just by putting screws into things. So this should be ready to come out. This is not ready to come out. Is there a screw on the bottom maybe? Nope. Oh, it slides. Okay, it was just friction held in there. Oh, look at that. She's a... Uh... A replacement. Five bucks, huh? It's dirty. Um, it doesn't seem too dirty in there. Hopefully we don't have to open it up. Not that it would be a big deal. But uh, I forget what it's called in there. Uh, the, the Rifa cap? Hopefully that doesn't blow up on us. And then we got this thing, which is uh, uh, broken. Yeah, the little head is broken for holding it in there. Um, I'm sure we could fix that in some form. Why does everybody got to be so mean to stuff like this? It's delicate, like a flower. Let's get all of these mismatched PCI blanks out of Well, the, the PCI blanks aren't mismatched, but the screws are. So, let's get these out of here. And while I'm looking at this thing, it's pretty bent. Not that it's a big deal. We'll straighten it out. And, oh yeah, these are actually mismatched PCI blanks. From all kinds of different systems that, oh wow, look at that. Anyways, um, the head of that 
does not match the head of that. But these are all, these three are very similar. So these are probably, from, oh no, they're not exactly the same. They got, it's from all kinds of different things. Probably all kinds of different systems throughout the years. Anywho, huh? When I talk about it being bent, I'm talking about this part right here, part right there, but it's flimsy anyways, sheet metal, so we can straighten that all out. Okay, I am going to take this shell and go rinse it out, and hopefully deal with that stuff. Be right back. Okay, so now we're gonna test the power supply out. I've got it hooked up to the wall power, but um, of course I have the switch turned off. I got a bit of a load um, hooked up to it, a fan and a uh, old hard drive. Um, let's see what it does. Hopefully the reefer cap doesn't blow up. You know, I don't even know if it has one. Oh, hey. You can feel the hard drive spinning up. That's spun up. That's loud. <laughs> I might replace the fan in there with this. Anyways, that works. So let's test the whole system. Well, not the whole system, but the motherboard. Okay, I got the system hooked up here. Um, like I said, this uh, graphics card has a uh, DB9 connector on it. This is an EGA card. Um, after some, uh, I guess you'd call it research and asking around online. I am inconclusive on the answer to this, but um, I did read that a lot of older LCDs you should be able to adapt from a VGA uh, to a DB9. Well, VGA to DB9, um, and it should work. Um, if the uh, if my LCD doesn't work over here, uh, over here, I do have an old. Um, I think it's a Sony, yeah, Sony Multiscan 420GS that we can try. A CRT, basically. So, um, let me hook this up and we'll find out. All right, I got my um, monitor hooked up to the, the graphics card and everything else hooked up. Oh, before we get too far into this, um, I did give this motherboard a nice cleaning. Um, Adrian's digital basement style. And it has been drying for a number of hours. It should be good to go. Let's give it a go. Let's see what happens. Please don't blow up. Well, I probably should have hooked the speaker up. Okay, I got the speaker hooked up. Let's go ahead and flip this on. Got a beep. That sounded good. All right, I don't know if we're gonna get anything on the screen. I could try the CRT. Uh, uh, finding an EGA monitor is hard and expensive, and then, of course, getting an EGA, sorry, getting a VGA card that's 8-bit. Um, I can even get a 16-bit one, but I don't know if it'll fit the board. Um, it will also be difficult and expensive, so. <clears throat> so I'm getting ready to put this thing back together. Um, and... I pulled the, the PCI bracket, uh, PCI mount, whatever you want to call it, expansion rack mount thing off. And I noticed, look at, can you see that? There we go. Look at all the scratches from PCI cards coming in and out of this thing. This thing <laughs> has been worked on so many times. I mean, that doesn't just happen, you know, because you change out the card once or twice. That happens after like 50, uh, that's, that's crazy. I feel like it's crazy. I don't know. Anyways. So unfortunately, I went against my better judgment and I took a pair of pliers and I bent this tab up so that I could try and flatten it out because um, it looks like it's really been beat up over the years, which is crazy. And it literally just, it just popped off. Like I put the pliers underneath it and I bent it up and it just came right off. So that's unfortunate, but not the biggest deal in the world. Um, I could design and 3D print something that sits in here and has a hole in the top and I can screw down into it to hold it uh, still. Um, we'll see what happens. It's not that big a deal. So let's take the motherboard in there. Um, so I've got 
uh, as many of these as I, I can get on there. Um, I moved one from the center here, uh, I believe to back here or somewhere, maybe it was up here. It was just to give it the strength that it needs. So, slide that thing in there. Come on. There we go. I think that's all in there. So the screw is supposed to go into this um, thing over there. I'm gonna keep it from doing this. Well, it's a bummer that I can't do that anymore. However, once you have a card in here, it's not gonna move. He tells himself. Okay, so that wasn't recording. Uh, no big deal. Stuck the graphics card in it to hold it still. The more and more I look at this, the more I wish that tab wouldn't have broken off. Whatever. I'm just going to put these back in here the way they were in the beginning because the hard drive might have information on there. Like, this isn't going to be plug and play, so maybe there's some. Again, I don't, I don't know anything about these systems. I don't know if there's IRQ conflicts and stuff like that or if it, I don't know what slot it was in. I don't know. Not a real positive engagement in there. Anyways, I'm gonna get matching screws for all of these. Can look presentable. Serious Clark. All right, unfortunately, I don't have a bunch of matching screws, so I'm going to come as close as I can. solid in there all right so let's get this sorry excuse for an <laughs> assembly back together so I pulled the two screws holding the hard drive into this um, out and the hard drive has a front face on it still so um, I think we could probably do away with that we don't really need two faces stacked up against each other so all right, nothing exciting, but I put matching screws in here to hold it all solid and get rid of that other um, drive bay. Uh, I don't know what you call this cover. So it's uh, it's more better. So here we are. Huh? Did it feel like that before? Screws don't exactly line up. We're sitting all the way on the bottom, I do believe. Hmm. All right, hard drive is now much more secured in there. Um, the screws just barely fit in there. It's kind of a, I don't know, is it a aftermarket drive um, sled or who knows, but uh, it fits, we're good. Let's get this crusty power supply in there because I want to be able to get this plugged in and then put my uh, um, floppy drive in there. So there's probably this one in there. Yep. Nope. This one. This old thing has led a hard life. Things are bent up. 
This one doesn't doesn't fit probably like it used to. We can grit our teeth and sort of force the issue. I think we got it. No, it seems crooked. All right, I got it to go in there and sit flush. It just took um, a whole lot of like, sort of like twisting and picking up to just get like, just a tenth of a millimeter of room that you needed to get that to start threading in straight. So, um, yay. So let's get this floppy in there. It goes like that. There we go. Nice. All right, I got my cards in there. We got all the uh, cables and um, wires hooked up, power hooked up. I got this loosely in there because it's broken. We'll have to find a better way for that to uh, be a thing. And everything is clean and tidy, which is nice. So, seeing as uh, I didn't get video on there, um, I do have a CRT that I can hook up to it in hopes that it'll work. I don't have high hopes. Uh, I might have to get a hold of a VGA card. I'm, I've been looking for an EGA monitor for a little while, as if I had I've had this uh, computer for. I don't know, um, over a month now, and really no luck on getting an a EGA monitor. Um, well, uh, we'll call it uh, we'll call it quits there for now. Um, I don't know if it's the end of this video or just the end of the day because it's getting late. So, um, figure out what I'm going to do with this in a minute.